Hey everybody, today we are looking at section 7.4 and we're also going to look at section 7.5 today. Um, so with 7.4 we're looking at applying properties of similar triangles. The nice part of all of what we're looking at with section 7.4 is we're getting lines that are dividing things proportionally. So when I look here at this first theorem, if I have a line that is parallel to one side of the triangle, okay, then that means that the two triangles that are in here are going to be similar, but even easier is that this piece and this piece will be divided proportionally. This piece and this piece will be divided proportionally. Okay, the converse of that is also true. If this is divided proportionally, then I know that these lines are parallel. So let's take a look at what that actually means. Okay, I want to find the length of the segment and I want to find CY. So I'm just going to call CY. Let's see, what letter do I have? A, B, C, X, Y. Let's just call it Z. Okay, so it's a letter that hasn't been used for a point. Um, so my lines here are parallel. So I know that this is divided proportionally. Well, the really great thing about this is that I can look at the triangle. I'm going to kind of look at it this way back here for a second. I can look at it this way. These are proportional. Or I can turn the triangle like it is here and say that these are proportional as well. So when I look at this, all I have to do is draw in the fraction bar, the equal sign, and the fraction bar. It doesn't matter what way your triangle is turned, this will always work. So my proportion I can set up is 4 over z is equal to 9 over 10. All right, so from here we're going to cross multiply. I'm going to get 9z is equal to 40. And when I divide both sides here, I'm going to get 40 over 9. And, you know, go ahead and just leave that. That is reduced. Um, that's fine. So, again, setting it up here. I could also have set up 9 over 4 equals 10 over Z. The reason being, look what happens when I cross multiply. I get 9Z is equal to 40. So I end up in the same place. This is why it doesn't matter which way your triangle is turned because it works both ways. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here. I want to verify that these lines are parallel, which means that these should be in proportion. So again, I'm going to draw in my fraction bar, my equal sign and my fraction bar. So what I want to know is, is 21 over 15 going to be the same ratio as 42 over 30? Okay, so when we reduce this, these are both divisible by 3. This is going to give me 7 over um, 5. And these are both divisible by 6. This is also going to be 7 over 5. So they are equal, which means that MN is parallel to KL. That is using that converse um, of the theorem. Okay, so example one was using the original theorem. Example two is using the converse to show that those lines are parallel. Um, if you have questions about either example or either of the theorems, go ahead and write that down now. All right, the next one is now we're looking at more than two lines that are parallel. So this is like if we said, okay, here's a parallel line here, I'm going to add another one. All right, the same thing is going to happen. I'm still going to divide these proportionally because I can think about extending these lines and here's the triangle. Okay, so it's going to work the exact same way. So these two will be proportional and with these two. Okay, so I can put this over this is equal to this over this. And again, the same thing is true if it's turned. All right. Um, so we have here that an artist used her perspective to draw guidelines to help her sketch a row of parallel trees. Okay, so the thing here that's important is that the trees are parallel. Okay. Then she measured the distance between the trees. We want to know the length of LN. So I want to know this whole distance here. So I'm going to call that X, which means I want to use this whole distance up here. So 1.4 plus 2.2 .2 is going to be 3.6 centimeters. Okay. Um, so that's what I want to kind of look at setting up here is I want this whole distance LN. All right. 
So I need to compare the whole distance that's kind of going to match to it on the other side. So again, we're going to set this up. Here's a fraction bar, an equal sign, and a fraction bar. So the way that I can set this up, I'm going to kind of scroll down a little bit here, is by saying 2.4 over KL, which is 2.6, is equal to 3.6 over X. All right, so when I look at this, again, we're going to cross multiply, and I'm going to have 2.4X is going to equal 2.6 times 3.6, which is going to be 9.36. Okay, then from here, I'm going to divide both sides by 2.4, and I'm going to get 3.9, and we are in centimeters for our units. Okay, so again, parallel lines is going to divide our triangles, divide our lines up proportionally. All right, so all we have to do is look at setting up this proportion. All right, so the picture of the image will give you the proportion. All right, the same thing is going to be happening here. Okay, this one here, we've got a triangle angle bisector. So in this triangle, ABC, AD bisects angle A. Okay, so we know that by our little congruent signs here. I can put this over this is going to be proportional to this over this. So again, this number over this number would equal this number over this number. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter which direction your triangle is going to be facing. So like in this case here, we're trying on its, our triangle is on its side. Okay, I can still do fraction bar, equal sign, fraction bar. And here's my proportion, 10 over 14 is equal to x plus 2 over 2x plus 1. Right, so again, the proportion is in the picture. We just, the biggest thing that you want to be really careful of, especially with the triangles, is that you don't crisscross. We don't want to put x plus 2 over 14. That is the one setup that will not work. Okay, I could put 10 over x plus 2 equals 14 over 2x plus 1. Or I could do it this way, but I cannot crisscross that. And anything that we've done for 7, 4, that's the biggest thing you need to know is that you cannot crisscross. So I'm going to set up 10 over 14 is equal to x plus 2 over 2x plus 1. All right, so from here, we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply 14 times x plus 2. It's going to equal 10 times 2x plus 1. All right, so we're going to distribute. We're going to get 14x plus 28 is equal to 20x plus 10. All right, I'm going to subtract 14x from both sides. I'm going to get 28 is equal to 6x plus 10. And again, we're kind of going to scroll down a little bit here. Okay, subtract 10 from both sides. I'm going to get 18 is equal to 6x. And when we divide both sides by 6, I'm going to get that x is 3. So now we look back at the question. It says find the length of segment RV and the length of segment VT. All right, so RV is going to be x plus 2. So RV is going to be 3 plus 2, which makes RV 5. Whoops, started to write a V. Or started to write a 5. Okay, RV equals 5. All right, same thing for VT. VT is 2x plus 1, so VT will be 2 times 3 plus 1. So 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So look at this. This is 5. This is 7. Okay, if I have 10 over 14 and I divide both of those by 2, that's going to give me 5 over 7. This is already 5 over 7. Or if I go this way, like if I do 5 over 10, that's 1 half, and 7 over 14, that's also 1 half. So again, it really doesn't matter which way you go. Okay, so here's what we're going to go ahead and do now, because I'm not going to get all of 7, 5 into this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end this with just being 7.4. So this will be the 7.4 video. Go ahead and then turn right around and go watch the 7.5 video. It's only, it's not going to be super long. Um, and then make sure you get all of your notes taken, okay? Again, anytime you have questions, make sure you write them down so that you can ask them in class tomorrow. So I will see you guys in class 
and then please go ahead and watch the video on 7.5. Thank you.